<laughs> that's that's us sinking it. That's yeah, it. It's the sinky boy. I want to say welcome everybody to what is this, the podcast? Is this a questionnaire? It's an interview. It's gonna be it's yeah. gonna be a month of interviews. Uh, mm-hmm. people that we look up to, people this is that probably we gonna respect. be like one of the last of interviews, so they'll already have seen two interviews and been like, Wow, welcome That's to the their month fault. of interviews. <laughs> That's definitely their fault. Yeah, <laughs> but regardless, today mm-hmm. we have Dominic Smith. Yo. And that's it, guys. Thanks. Thank you so much Thanks for so coming. Much. <laughs> Dominic, you focus more on your directing. You focus more on your craft in film. And I guess, what is what would be our first questions, Keon? First question is, who are you so our audience <laughs> understands the, the magnitude of the guest we have on right now? Um, uh, you got to. Nah, that's too big for me. Big. I'm you about so? to let everybody down. Um, well, we're just predicting. <laughs> that's what it is. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, Dominic Smith. I have been a filmmaker for like 10 plus years now. Um, man, that that is a big number to me. Um, yeah, <laughs> Maybe we should have started with a different question. <laughs> <laughs> Not to have. Yeah, 10 plus years. I am a father first before Eight. anything. Yeah. I have two beautiful twin daughters. Wrapping them on a shirt right them. here. Yeah, buddy. Um, twin Life Zone. That It's a YouTube channel. I've been trying to take off for a while. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> subscribe right now. Yeah, and I'm a director and an editor. Those are like my two main focuses. Uh, I try not to be a jack of all trades because, like, I want to be a master. <laughs> yeah, um, I tell you, are, are yeah. You so, me? I've seen your stuff. <laughs> yeah, so directing and editing mm-hmm. is my focus. I do do a bunch of other stuff, but like those are like mm-hmm. my loves. The way that we actually connected was over uh, Treat Street. Yep. And uh, mm-hmm. you, Another you're just one, like, yeah. hey, I need a project, a product designer. I'm just like. Well, what would you need in a product <laughs> designer, <laughs> uh, production designer? And then we just started going from there and like mm-hmm. making graphics and stuff. But like as soon as you showed me that Google Drive that yeah. had like all of those folders, I'm like, this guy gets it. It's so organized. <laughs> I love it. Just yeah. the fact that like you can put it everywhere. If somebody asks like, oh, it's in this. Here's a link to the Google Drive. It's in this folder. Yeah. And you immediately can get like a snapshot of what needs to be done mm-hmm. is so just that oh, that level of organization it, mm-hmm. immediately i'm just like i gotta work with this guy He's see and then i enjoyed your level of organization because when i went into the folder mm-hmm. there were subfolders of like oh i'm just like yes like okay <laughs> <laughs> it's not a mess when i go in here he appreciates oh, me thank I you love it. oh my god because i think I, I made one that was like a lookbook and a couple other things you're just like okay you're doing t- too much it's fine <laughs> i'm like that's i'm glad to hear that <laughs> instead of doing too little but man that was uh it's, it's a joy to really working with you on set because yeah. also if you guys haven't seen Terror Tales, which you can go check out the YouTube channel, how many episodes are out by now? We did 12 oh, for the first season, mm-hmm. six for the second season, which is still like in development. Yes. Gotcha. I, and they're super fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But both of us have worked on it and like <clears throat> it being on your sets is super fun. I think I remember you mentioning that like might not be super fun for you, but for everybody else, <laughs> it is a joy. Seriously. <laughs> That's the goal, man. It's just like... Um, I don't have to have fun, but as long as everybody else like wants to come back, that's all I care about. I gotta say this, this this personality and just the environment that you bring in is such an important thing. I don't care if like the entire show is like awful or anything like that. As long as I had fun making yep. it, that's all that matters. And you can see that in, in a lot of your work. Treat Street, a, uh, Nightmare Before Elm Street, bag man you could just tell it's like okay these people having fun yeah and like that's yeah. that's all that matters you might be having a nightmare you're you're, you're dead on the plane <laughs> riding it back to work but the fact is that everybody has such positive like output you mm-hmm. know after the show is just great yeah that's i mean like how do you how do you feel about running your sets like what's your kind of philosophy as a director mm-hmm. like in that way um getting into all- the questions <laughs> yeah I always say, like I've learned over the years, you have to have an exit strategy no, <laughs> as a director. Fair. <laughs> it took some time for me to like reach this point, but when I did Nightmare, which was also probably one of the biggest productions like I've ever like mm-hmm. headed before, two days out of the eight days we shot, we had 80 people, like each day <laughs> for a thing that nobody's being paid for. <laughs> 
And like everybody just wanted to come out and be a part of this. Like it was one of the most humbling experiences I've stress. ever had about. in my yeah, life. Exactly. Like I'm freaking out. But I mean, that's that's another thing in my opinion that like when you watch it, you're just like, this is a film, right? Like they're making this. Yeah, right now. this, this is just, gonna happen, right? There's so many people and they all are in it. Like yeah. dang. And I mean that's that's like I think that's a mm -hmm. that's like a credit to how fun it is to be on your sets and like how people yeah. trust you, you know? Like so when we did that, uh specifically I would say so we filmed a prom scene and mm -hmm. we had had, had to have all these teenagers and stuff come out. Okay, so Bagman, second best experience on set. Filming this prom scene, first best experience mm. ever. Really? Yeah, and it was because one, like we, so we had all these teenagers come out. They were all like just super cool and like, and like everybody's like in prom gear, like, you know, everybody You're like ready, dressed yeah. up and everything. Yeah. We had a DJ come out and everything that day was MOS. So it was just the DJ on the ones and twos, like the entire 12 hours. Yeah, yeah. And everybody is just like lit, like the whole that's day. Awesome. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. It was like time. one of the best times like directing. And, I was about um, to say, how do you direct teenagers? Like Right, and I was, bro, I was so nervous about it. I was, Cause mm -hmm. I had never had this many people on set. Mm -hmm. um, it was like, like 35 extras, five principal, like 30 people on crew mm -hmm. that day. Again, I repeat. Nobody was paid or any, and these, like, it wasn't like, like these were all people who I work with in the industry. You know what I mean? Like, it yeah, wasn't yeah, just yeah. like your Joe Schmo or whatever. It was like, yeah, Friends like people, family, yeah. yeah, like yeah. who do this? Um, so it, again, it was just humbling. And like, mm -hmm. to this day, I thank everybody who was a part of that experience <laughs> with me, mm -hmm. seriously. Um, but like I said, exit strategy. Um, and I say that because- Yeah, what do you mean you, by that? So you need to have, and like, not to, Oh, yeah. I think that Hello? might be Jack's learning how to use doors. Yeah. So that's probably I'm just being like, I want to go hang out. Cats are stupid. Smart. Um, they're, but they're not stupid to be smart. such a millennial, but like you definitely need a safe space like as a director. Really? So now when I'm ever on set, I have a place that I can escape to. Like mm. whenever I show up to a location, I say, okay, this is the room that nobody will know where I'm at. The only people who know are the DP and the AD. And it's just because if at any point you're standing around on set, somebody's gonna come up to you and ask you a question and it's gonna take you out of like whatever yeah. you're trying to get into. I remember when we filmed the prom scene, there was like this couch like in a nook in the front of the building. Nobody knew about it. And like I pulled my AD aside and my DP Scott and I was like, yo, mm -hmm. if you can't find me at any point, this is where I am. Otherwise, don't tell anybody else about this location. <laughs> <laughs> Smart, I, I, feel wow. like, I feel like DPs, directors and ACs like first ACs yeah. should have that thing that horses have. Oh, blinders, like they, yeah. They just line you up. It's like, all right, that's all I'm focusing on. <laughs> because like, that's the thing with like a lot of, uh, what is it, like other directors and like, like professionals, mm -hmm. you know? It's that thing where like, okay, I get there's a million problems right now. Yep. And it's a set with hundreds of people. There's gonna be problems. But this yep. mm -hmm. is what, this is my problem. And this is what I'm gonna solve. Mm -hmm. Everyone else has their job and they're gonna focus on that. I have like, ADHD or something, <laughs> and like we've it, noticed. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, if I look at something and I'm like fidgeting it, and then somebody was like, "Don't touch that," yeah. and, and I'm like, <laughs> e even even when you're a person of like um, mm. of like I guess leadership, you know, sure, like a director sure. or cinematographer, and like one of my awful habits as a cinematographer and this is why i need blinds for my eyes mm -hmm. is that like i'll see a line i'll be like can we adjust that a little bit and like i'll just go in yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and like my gaffer casey especially and he just like just like, <laughs> like what am i here for if you're yeah, gonna, why yeah, am i yeah, even yeah. here for and like that can be like you know not it can be semi-insulting it's like why am mm -hmm. i even here for well, like the best advice you ever gave me, because like the first project we worked on, Outcast, I immediately I'm used to being a one man band, and mm -hmm. I had never worked mm -hmm. on anything before. Yeah. So like, or at least never worked on anything that was like, here's your job. Yeah. It was just like, oh, you need to film a thing. Okay, I guess I'm doing everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like we went in, and he was just like, okay, cool, I'm going to direct. And then I took over literally every single other thing, <laughs> and like organized all of it, and I, and he could see my like my every muscle in my body <laughs> tensing up from stress. Yeah. And then I remember you distinctly just being like, it's not even like giving yourself like all of those problems mm -hmm. but it's understanding that you only need to deal with uh, a couple yeah. it's it's that you only need these ones and you need to allow other people yes. to do their jobs and that Sometime, like yeah sorry yeah well no just as a director like we we recently just did a music video and like on it i distinctly remember you were just like you're just the director that's it They're, the producer <laughs> yeah. the dp everything else is taken care of and i remember i turned up the set and i was like 
it was it was a zen moment of just like none of these are my problem. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And so like just yeah, just having that moment of like this is exactly what my problems are mm-hmm. and just knowing you don't have to deal with like yeah. everything for everybody. And that's apparently mm-hmm. like a, especially for like directors, that's a very mm-hmm. popular thing where like uh, a director will have their own like village, mm-hmm. right? They don't want anyone near them. I need my own little bonsai tree it's, garden. It's literally yeah. like that's why like a director will have a director's monitor so mm-hmm. that he yeah. can like disappear and like do their own thing. Or she. Know? Or she? Sorry, there you're absolutely go. right. Mm-hmm. Them, yep, for them exactly. to like, for them mm-hmm. to leave yeah. and come back and like do their thing. I'm just mm-hmm. giving you. Yeah. No, no, you're. No, he you're, deserves it. He I, deserves I, everything. I need this. I need yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. I need this. Uh, I actually have a question. Ooh. Um, as a director, how do you approach scripts? What scripts do you usually like to tackle, and why? Man, it just has to move Horror me. films. No, no. no. Well, <laughs> do, you love, do you like horror films? By you like man, films? like, I hate them. <laughs> I'm actually trying to get more into directing stuff that, like, I didn't write or that I wasn't, like, you know, that wasn't a brainchild of my own. Mm. Haven't gotten that opportunity. <laughs> I feel you. But, yeah, so usually with me, it's um, most of the things that I've directed, most of the things that I've written, most of the things that I've come up with have all, like, generated from a song. Probably, like, 95% of everything everything I've directed like started from a song. Really? Yeah, and it's just because before I was a filmmaker, I used to be a rapper and I was really into music. I used to write like all of that stuff. I don't um, know about this. Yeah, I, I'll have to show you some of the music Dude, videos. yes. Um, oh. But yeah, so I was like heavy into music. The only reason I got into film was because it's crazy to even think about. It. There was like, only one person back in Michigan in Kalamazoo where I'm from who shot music videos. And I remember at the time, I was like 17, 18, mm-hmm. and he charged 300 bucks to shoot music videos. I was like, man, I ain't got that much money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I took a class at a public media access center, um, 15 bucks. And after you take the class, you can just rent equipment for free. So I just started renting equipment and like learned how to shoot my own stuff. And that's kind of like where it stemmed from. So then I still had the love for music. I yeah. just fell in love with film so much more. So now like I'll build these, like you can check my phone, like my Spotify, mm-hmm. I have uh, like, I'll have a um, like a playlist for every movie that I've ever made. Yeah. Um, and that's how like it starts. Like I'll hear a song and I'm like, man, this would be a dope scene for blah, blah, blah. And like, as I'm driving, I start like building this scene. And from that scene, builds an idea and that's how all of like seriously like you pull up one of my films and i'll tell you what song like stem that project sometimes a song may not generate an idea like sometimes i'll be driving and i will like a scene will pop into my head and then i'm like oh i have to like apply a song to this so i can start like building from it and like Mm -hmm. i'll start listening to music and think about like i'll think about like what score would like sit well with the scene that i'm thinking Mm -hmm. and then from there i'll find the song and then it starts to build what i enjoy about starting with a track like that is once the film is done i listen to the music that inspired me to see if it matches the tone that i wanted to start as that's um, genius. And it's just, it like, it, like it either makes you, like, it, it yeah. for me, it gives you a reference of how close did I come to yeah. what I wanted See, in that, the beginning. That's gotcha. what I love about that, because, like, you always go in with, like, I always, t- I feel bad, because, like, you, we always say, like, kill your darlings. Like, when you yeah. go in, you have this, like, perfect version of it, but then after, like, going through the production process, mm-hmm. you realize, oh, some of those ideas didn't really work out. But also, there's always that moment of, like, you have this amazing idea when you start out, and then... Uh, for me at least like once we get to the end product if you don't feel great about it for me it's always a question of like mm-hmm. well what what was there that i didn't actually achieve how could we have achieved it so i love that as like a bookend to mm-hmm. be like this mm-hmm. is exactly what i wanted to listen back to and be like yeah i guess either this worked this didn't work and like actually see why because yep. that's always my biggest issue is like if i man dude it, i and i mean like every creator out there will watch their thing back and be like this isn't right and i don't know why and i'm so <laughs> upset about it once the world sees it mm-hmm. i'm not changing it anymore yeah um I just, just cause like i can't like at that point i have to like let it go mm-hmm. what's that uh what's that will smith meme like yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like that's how i feel yeah. gave it back to the streets yeah that's it, that's it. and it's staying <laughs> and, that, and, and moving away mm-hmm. whenever you're talking to your talent how do you talk to them how what is it that you put into their heads so that they can perform what you want to see. For me, once I approach a project, 
I enjoy kind of, I guess, liberating the talent. Mm -hmm. I want them to know this character more, like way better than I do, even though I wrote it. Mm -hmm. Just because like, you know, I do a lot of like groundwork as far as just the character and the background and all of that. But once it's handed over to the actor, I expect them to do so much more work. I remember working with Sean Gloria on a film called Reset, like years ago. It sucks mm -hmm. that I'm even like, continuously bringing that up, but it was, such yeah. a, it was such a big experience for me. Yeah. Um, please and I please remember, cringe with us. <laughs> yeah, yes. cringe with us. <laughs> I remember working with him and he told me, we were talking about a scene and this was like before production. Uh, we were still in pre pro and we were talking about a scene. He had delivered a performance like just during rehearsals and I was like, bro, like this, this was huge. Like this was such a great performance. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, where did you go with this? And he broke down to me like his background on this character. And I was like, dude, I didn't write that. Like this, like, and that was the first time I had experienced like just a talented actor, like really doing like his own research, her own research, just really breaking it down. So then going into it further, every time like I make a film, I have like a list of questions like I'll ask the actor. Really? As mm. far as like what they took from the script, like what they took from this character, what they view as this character's background. Huh. Um, and then we kind of build from there. How do you feel you you get there with with a character with uh, an actor that hasn't really experienced those kind of things or how do you help them along the way to get to that place? Man, it's just dialogue. Um and I wish there was like like it's to be honest like it's not a one size fits all thing. Mm -hmm. Um and it's not for me like it's like lightning. It's not the same experience twice. Really? Uh every actor I've worked with, it's like there's usually a different approach like I have to take, especially if I'm in a <laughs> I remember a specifically uh, tough scene that I was like trying to convey uh, to an actress and she wasn't like doing a bad job like by any means it was just it wasn't my vision okay. um, and I was trying to find a way of getting my vision without giving her a line read because it's like the ultimate disrespect to an actor oh, yeah. um, and I'm just like man how do I approach this and I remember I had to like step away and really think like okay how do I because it's like it's, it's a puzzle piece like you're yeah. like you're literally trying to figure out how do I explain to this person without because like if it was a, like if it was my kids I'm like just say it like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> two plus two is four. It's right there. It's right there. Yeah. yeah, but it's like you, like you really have to think about the character in that moment, and you have to explain to them. Yeah. Okay, this is how they're feeling. This is why they wouldn't say it this way because this is happening. This is going mm -hmm. on. Because in you and I had a conversation earlier. You have to like find that medium of you don't want to underdirect. You don't. You don't want to overdirect. Yeah. Under directing is like be madder, like be angrier, oh God, like yeah. be happier, yeah. be excited. Um, yeah, poison. Without... <laughs> that's poison for an actor. <laughs> be madder. Yeah, yeah. cry. Yeah. You know, like the proper way is like, like I need you to remember, your mom just died last night. Oh. Um, mm. You know, like you, like you failed that test. You blah blah blah. Like this meant the world to you. This, you know, like you have to really like dig in to like make them feel this scene, and then you can mess up and like over direct where it's like. They just delivered like a two minute scene and it's like, okay, so when you say this line, I need you to do this. But also oh. when this happens, I need you to do this. And I've, I've like me, Michael. myself, like I've caught myself doing that. Um, and I'm like, ooh, I just gave them too much information. Yeah. Like I need to like really dial it back. That's really tough too. Cause I've seen so many directors, like even like at a higher level, like do that. Like they'll give an actor 20 things like before they're about to roll. And I'm like, yo, they are not about to remember all of <laughs> this stuff. The actor's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> getting like berated by all yeah. these like notes. <laughs> the collaborative nature of your sets is always just yeah. like you, trusting everybody with what they're doing. And like, I, I, man, I get into that point where I'm just like, <laughs> it's, it's one of those moments where you're just like, I just wish I could act the whole thing myself. Mm -hmm. I used to be like that. And it's like so toxic when you think back <laughs> that and you're just like, Oh, how could you think it'd be so arrogant to think that? Yeah. But then when you realize that like the point of it is not to, and like that starting out with that vision and then it, kind of evolves is realizing that like okay well when you give them that two plus two and then they cre can create four for themselves like see well I, okay i read through the script i know what this character is like now mm -hmm. and then having that discourse that's the best for me oh my god being on a set and being able to say like well your character this and that and then they like come back at you with something yeah. about like well this also happened like and you mm -hmm. you actually can have that moment of like huh oh, 
You're right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Interesting. <laughs> like, that's great. Wow. Thank you. We're, we're doing this. It's not just, uh, oh my God, the worst. Just just being yeah. like, be a little bit angrier. Just yeah. angry? Do you, yeah. do you know what angry is? <laughs> what about like uh, some tricks? Ooh. You know, some like Give us director's the tricks. For example, for To Wake Up Dead, yeah, sure. uh, my lead actor, uh, Maverick Gagliano, love him. Love you to death. Uh, he was playing this character who, you know, has a sleep paralysis, but in his sleep paralysis, some monster comes in and tries to hurt him. So he refuses to sleep. He cannot mm -hmm. sleep. And I would go around set and it's like, hey, blah, 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 how's everyone? And I was like, how did everyone sleep? You, Maverick, how do you sleep? And he said, good. And I said, wrong answer. And I, <laughs> and I, I, I walked away. I literally walked away. Yeah. And like, I just remember like him just going like, <laughs> like, like, like that, you see the right? gears, yeah, and yeah. you see mm -hmm. the gears turning and whatnot, and like again, just going back on like how talented a lot of actors are. Again, I mean, for me, it just depends on the character, the role. Like mm -hmm. it, again, it's like it's all different. For example, going back to uh, Reset, Sean plays like a racist uh, older brother, and he's like kind of really. I think that's Jack. It's oh, Jack. Yeah. It's He's Jack. learning. He's evolving. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, the door's open. No. Did Jack lose it? Everything okay? Everything all right? I gotta go party. Okay. okay. Yeah, go for <laughs> it. The restroom is right sure, there. Sure, yeah, it's right there. <laughs> yeah. I hope the mics pick that up. I really hope the mics pick that up. We'll keep it in. I really needed Sean to be able to stay in character, like, mm -hmm. in, like just in this role. And we had... I feel like she's struggling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's never well, happened. It would be better if you helped. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll so you were this. saying, sorry. Yeah, we had Sean. He was uh, he was playing like this racist older brother. Our lead is a young black kid, moves into a new town with his mom. Um, his dad uh, is kind of like, what is it? Not like a prisoner of war, but like he was like missing, like, uh, you know, like in war. They moved to a new town and like one day the kid is like going through like a bunch of his like dad's old stuff and he mm -hmm. finds this little ball and this ball allows him to time travel, but only oh. three minutes in the past. Okay. And he can't like stack the minutes, so it's only three minutes. Okay. But yeah, so he goes to a new school, he's got this bully um, and the bully has an older brother who's like super racist. Like I said earlier, Sean had, uh, you know, like he had created his own backstory. And he was like, yeah, he's like, um, like our parents, uh, our mom like left our dad for a black man. And like our dad, like, you know, really like flipped his And all of that kind of like spilled off to like Sean's character. And the dad ends up like going to prison. So like the brother is like left to like raise his older, bro his younger brother. Damn. Um, yeah. Before production, we were chatting and I was really concerned about because like I had like there were kids on set and I was concerned yeah. about them being able to just like stay in this mode and like not get distracted and all of that. And I was like, Sean, I need you to come to come to set his character. Like every day you're here, come to set his character. Wow. And he's like, Are you sure? And I was like, yeah. He's like, OK. So the first day he shows up, com it, like it was a completely chaotic day and we were filming at a high school. Oh, wow. um, he like it's supposed to be he drives this like old uh, El Camino and I borrowed it from this guy named Buzz like really cool actor in the area he let me borrow it and he showed me how to like drive it like properly how to start it all this stuff mm -hmm. so Sean shows up I'm getting ready to start the car and because I brought him over I was like hey come over here I'm gonna show you how to start this car and he gives me this look I was like what is wrong with Sean? Like, he's like off today, but whatever. Come over here. I'm gonna show you how to like start this car. So I oh go to start God. it and it's not starting up. And I look at him and I realize in this moment, that's right, he's in character right now. Wow. And I'm a black dude. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I try to start the car up and it doesn't start up. And he was like, move over. Let me show you how a man starts a car. <laughs> And I get out of the car and I'm looking at him and I'm just like, Lord, please let this car start up because I can't have his ego be bruised mm, in yeah, this yeah. moment. Mm -hmm. First try, like revs right up. And I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> and I just run off and I go uh, meet up with Scott, who's DP in it. And I was like, yo, 
just a forewarning, Sean is in full character right wow. now. And I don't know how I'm about to navigate this. And he's like, all right, I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Scott's white, just so everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> so Scott goes to talk to him, comes back to me, and he's like, yo, so I just spoke to Sean. We're all good to go. He said, um, any direction is to come from me, meaning Scott, not you meaning me <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like yo how am I going to direct him for this movie <laughs> but okay alright I got it it was tough just like not being able to speak to him because he's also like him and I are friends so like that's what made it harder too and I remember one day I was having a particularly really tough day mm -hmm. um, and I was like walking past him and we were filming at the high school that day um, and he stops me and like grabs me and gives me a hug doesn't Aww. say anything, just like holds me That's for a so second. Nice. My arms are like down to the side and he lets me go and he whispers in my ear, don't get used to this. And just like walks off. <laughs> so then like the final Damn. day, I call rap. And I'm just like, all right, like that's a wrap on Sean. And it's just like, you could see the character like drop off of him. Like Aww. melt away. Yeah. Aww. And like he looks at me and wow. he's like, bro, don't ever ask me to do that again. Damn, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, I mean, sometimes that's what it takes, man. And it that's was what it, it takes. Was, wow. It was a fun experience. Like, I'm really happy I did it. Even though, like, he stayed in the character, he never went over the top. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But yeah, overall, man, I just think, like, you, you touched on it um, in the beginning of the question, just about, like, collaboration. And mm -hmm. um, I think, especially, I mean, like, no matter what level I'm at, but especially at this level that we all work at, mm -hmm. I think collaborating is just so important to just empower your crew. Mm -hmm. um, because like, and I used to do a, like earlier, I used to do a speech like at the beginning of a production and I'd uh, let everybody know how to me, like it was so cliche, but I was like, you know, yeah, yeah. filmmaking is like a car and mm -hmm. like every part of like an engine is important. Like you, you're missing one piece. Like it doesn't run how it's Everybody in the to. crew is like, yeah, and I'm telling like everybody, like no matter what level you are, like you are important and I need you to understand that you're important. But it's just because like I want everybody to feel like this is mm -hmm. their project just as much as mine. There's no other medium like filmmaking as mm -hmm. far as like what we do, like trying to explain to anybody who doesn't work in this industry. Hey, like for the next five days, I'm going to be working on this project. Oh, no. How much you making? Nothing. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Like, what yeah. was it? Just like a quick thing? No, we're working like 12, 14 hour days. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. every day. My dad is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I tell him, I was like, yeah, I'm doing this thing. He's like, are you getting paid? <laughs> and I'm like, dad, it's a really cool idea. Let it's, me it's just, let me just cool. say, and he goes, yeah. well, ideas don't pay the bills. <laughs> and I'm like, mm. and I'll be completely honest in the fact that like, I mean, Working corporate jobs, you you need it. Mm -hmm. I, I literally, oh my God, I, I even told a friend of mine, like he, because I've been on a separate project that isn't even editing anymore. Mm -hmm. And so like a friend of mine was telling me like who is editing at the corporate level. He's just like, yeah, they got me editing boring stuff. I'm like, I would kill for, <laughs> so, for somebody to tell me to make the most milk toast garbage yeah. just so I could get back in an exactly. NLE, just so I could get back in Premiere. I would kill a human being and wear their skin so I could, <laughs> but, but like that's the thing is that like it's just such a it's it's so much fun and collaborative yeah. and exciting that like when you go do anything else you you're you're making your money just to live yep. and then you realize that like man I just want to go hang out with people for like hours and hours and hours and make something it, it doesn't is, even, bro yeah. like it's crazy like I know people like I have friends like who work a nine to five like outside of film. And then on the weekends, they will go and like do back breaking work on a film set yeah. mm -hmm. for 12 hours for no money because yep. it's fulfilling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it's like, it just, I don't like to this day, like I, all of my money that I make is like from film and I still do free projects. Yeah. Like I still do free projects. I feel like filmmaking is the only, well, not only, but one of the very few like mediums one of the very few jobs one of the very few uh things that you can do where literally everyone can say i made that yep. yeah yeah everyone can say it's i made so that good mm -hmm. you can you could have been there for one day and you gave somebody a bottle of water and yep. walked off yeah. but you have the right to say i made that yeah mm -hmm. seeing your and name like, on it, that it, screen it's just man. like oh it's oh, so nice. that and you're making something permanent yeah mm -hmm. you know it's for funny. and this is for all the people that say that why are you charging a thousand dollars for this? It's because it's permanent. Mm -hmm. This yep. is something that will be there forever. 
if you even if you don't choose it to be forever, it's gonna be there forever. As soon as you post it, somebody else has it now. As far as like I can like think of, and I've thought about it for years, filmmaking is the only like industry that literally can include every other industry that exists. Mm -hmm. Like everything, medicine, like everything yeah. you like have to use in mm -hmm. filmmaking at one point or another. Mm -hmm. Oh, you need a like like you need a shot of somebody like getting a shot in a hospital. We have to hire a nurse for that. COVID is going on. We need doctors on set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you dude. need like greenery. Like we have to like get people who like grow like. I can't remember mm -hmm. the title of these of these, these <laughs> florists or something like that. Yeah, yeah but yeah. like all of that, like interior mm -hmm. designers, like graphic designers, music, um, I'm like catering, like mm -hmm. everything is yeah. included in filmmaking. It it blows my mind. Like when I was starting out with like anything, doing yeah. anything, I was just like, oh my god, there's so there's so many different angles to it, and that when you when it comes together and you've done all of it, it's it's so fulfilling to be like, wow, mm -hmm. we we put in the time and effort to make something that is that is. It, it, I don't know. I don't know. Well, and just, it's, yeah. it, it, the thing is, is like no matter how much help, like let's say one of like for example, just something that we made five years ago, mm -hmm. right? A piece of garbage. Yeah. Or yeah, anything, anything. <laughs> yeah. You will look back at it, and you might say it's like, oh, this is crap. Mm -hmm. But right after that, right after that, we had a blast. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we had our tough moments, but man, we blew through it and. Mm -hmm. It's right, and we're looking at it. Yeah. Isn't that bonkers? That's the thing that I love. That like, whenever I tell anybody, like, if you if you're talking to somebody, he's like, yeah, I was on set with that other guy. Like, if they tell you somebody and they said they they were on set with someone that they're cool, you know they're cool. They yeah. spent twelve <laughs> yeah. hours with another human being. <laughs> they have nothing bad to say about them. They're fine. Sweating, cussing, just mm. just working, and mm. like, yeah, he's cool. It's like he must be. He must be. Like cool. he must be. I, if I believe he, you. If he's working in that environment. Mm -hmm. See, and it sucks getting better. Mm -hmm. Only because like you have a higher standard, yeah. you have a specific way that you have to run your set, and that feeling of man, it was just a bunch of us just hanging out, like mm -hmm. having a good time. Like it slowly goes away, and it's rare that I get to experience it like at that level. Like I, every once in a while, like I'll experience it, but for the most part, it's not that anymore. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it hurts, man. Like so, when we went to Miami, we shot those music videos. Mm -hmm amazing because it was so relaxed like yeah. we would just get up and shoot it's cool because now we have a lot more knowledge like we know how to get a better picture we know yep. how to do this we know how to get that but we're also not like killing ourselves to like get it exactly and it's yeah. just like man those are the moments like i live for like i i still like the sets i run now like i love them we still have a good time but to me it's like it's it's not comparable yeah i got you so, like yeah. just getting together mm -hmm. with like four or five friends it's and, it's like a different ride at disney it's still disney yeah but it's just a different ride yeah that's yeah. it yeah that's i mean like i assume that's why every director has like their crew that's on every yep. like every christopher nolan movie has to have michael Caine and like a couple other people yeah because they they just know who they are like they know how to direct them but mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. like that when you when it's just like smooth it just feels so good and yeah. like you can that's that's another thing about being on set like we said like 12 weekends and whatever it has to be smooth or yep. else you're just yeah. pulling teeth it <laughs> sucks mm -hmm. oh my god but yeah i mean like there's there's nothing better yeah. than yeah. being on a set where everything's just smooth yeah and you, and i mean the thing is like you're going to come across those hard moments yeah. you know, yeah. no matter what yeah. but the thing is those hard moments last for an hour yeah. they last yeah. for that shot actually yeah. and like yeah. that's it it's like all right we're moving on from that shot we're cool again cool yeah. and, like, and then you're from there go off you know? I'm gonna move on to the next question if that's okay. I'm I'm good to end it whenever you I, are. I have yeah. one more question for you. Sure, sure. And it's the worst question. You've answered this a million times. Oh. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask it differently. Interpretive dance. Uh yeah. <laughs> yeah no, so so, yeah, so cut to the wide we you you are very open with who inspires you, who what movies inspired you, mm -hmm. right? I'm gonna ask you what else inspired you, but not those movies. For example, like I love my movies. Alien is one of my favorites. The Exorcist, another great of my, one of my favorite films. I'll, I grab a lot of their stuff and implement it on my stuff, right? But I also watch anime. Mm -hmm. I also play games, mm -hmm. and a lot of inspiration comes from those things too. What inspires you in your visions and in your work? And you can't say music, Candyman. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say candy man for sure and i i guess just other films in general i guess i want to i want to explore more in what what where you grab information and where do you grab inspiration i would say 
maybe immediately is uh, my family. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Sorry, that was completely no, no, no. <laughs> I just got real. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely my family, um, my home. I just, uh, I grew up as that kid who I wanted to all, I remember there was a guy I used to work with. His name was Philip Johnson, if you watching this. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> um, I remember working at this place and our supervisor was like, Philip is the hardest working guy I've ever met. And I remember hearing that and I was like, I want somebody to say that about me. And ever since then, I was like, you know what? Everything that I do all in, like I'm going as hard as I can because I want people to look at me and say, I don't know how he does it. Mm. Um, So then on top of that, the other thing is just, uh, it's just that old, just adage of like, I want to make my mom proud. Mm -hmm. Um, So usually if I'm ever like making a project, it's, Like, it's because I want to be happy. You know, it's an idea, like, in my head and, like, all of that stuff. But, like, what pushes me, like, what drives me is making my mom as proud as possible and, like, Mm -hmm. making my kids as proud as possible. So if I'm ever, like, going hard, like, on a project, it's because, like, I'm either thinking about my mom or I'm Mm -hmm. thinking about my kids or I'm thinking about where I came from, like, back in Michigan. Just because, like, one day I want people to just... I want people to be able to say I knew him. Like mm-hmm. I knew that dude. I went to school with him. I want like, uh, yeah. It's just, yeah. No, it's really well said. That's really well said. <laughs> I, I my would... mom says I don't like horror movies after she says she sees my stuff. <laughs> so that's all yeah, right. Yeah, my parents are just like something funny. Something I'll make something my funny. My dad. Please. My <laughs> dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I do horror. I do a lot of horror. Mm-hmm. Super into horror. But I love all genre. Like I've done, like I'm big into sci-fi as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Bagman was a comedy. Like Mm -hmm. I kind of just wanted to dip my toe in that and see like how I do. I know the type, like for example, my mom, I know the type of films that she likes. Um, So like Reset was like kind of on like, if you were to mesh a film that I'm into and my mom's into, it was Reset. And, but I always said like at one point, I was just like, man, like I want to make a film for my mom with the stuff that has like been going on in the news with like George Floyd and the Mara Arbery and like all of that stuff. And a buddy of mine, Robert had like called me and he was just like, just calling to just like chat. And I brought that up and him and I were chatting. I was like, yeah, like hits me really hard because I've had this experience with cops. I've had that experience. Like, bro, like I've been like held at gunpoint from like 15 cops before, like been convicted like they were convinced like that I robbed a bank. Like I've like had my car like ripped apart by like all types of stuff. And I don't have a record at all. Yeah. <laughs> so I was talking to my boy Robert and he was like, bro, you gotta put that stuff into a script. Like mm-hmm. you have to like find a way to like mm-hmm. put that like into a script. The more I started thinking about it, I then started thinking about conversations that I've like had with my mom growing up. I didn't realize until like now, like it's a really weird tradition that certain people have, which is like, my mom had to cop talk with me when I was 15. Mm. Um, and the more I thought about it and like speaking to different friends, they're like, yeah, I've never had, my parents don't talk to me about that. Like, that's not a thing. Yeah. Um, and so then I, me realizing like, that's a strange tradition. And then thinking about other talks that my mom has like had with me growing up, I ended up writing the script about my mom. Um, and just like, it's like a poem. Um, it's like a like a 10 minute poem and it just like follows my life with my mom and like her just like raising a young black kid and like the concerns and the worries that she has to deal with because like you know you immediately think about the child but think about the parent that has to figure out how to protect that child yeah, yeah. that's what I'm writing right now that's hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow that's amazing. I'm just excited that like I'm gonna be able to make something for yeah. her and also yeah. about her <laughs> That's great. That's that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. I mean, that's and that's always the thing that like is so powerful about film and being able Mm -hmm. to to take that moment to be like, I have the ability to make something and I and I need to. Mm -hmm. Like, it's important that I do. Yeah. Like, that's incredible. Like, we we can get on movies all day. (laughs) We really do. But like, at the end of the day, these are people's stories. It means something Mm -hmm. to them, no matter what. It always means something to them. It goes to tell you that like, hey. You may have had fun with this film, but something derived from that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's there's a reason why this story is being told. I guess this is my last question. Have you ever tried DMT? <laughs> you I'm, like, I'm joking. I'm joking. This you is my this is my Joe Rogan question. You, get my, bro, you were about to get me on a 
on on a whole. We were about to go for another hour. <laughs> If you aren't serious, <laughs> come back. We will talk come about back, we'll all talk this. More about pretty. Pl- oh my god, I would love. Oh yeah. my god, remind us again who you are. Mm-hmm. What do we have looking forward to you? What plugs? Where can we give find us everything. You? Gotcha, uh, Dominic Smith uh, on Facebook. You can find me at Dom the Director. Uh, such a tool. Uh, <laughs> you can find me on Instagram uh, at Who's Your Film Daddy? Ooh, because I got kids, not because I'm a pervert. Ooh, uh, <laughs> you can one of both. Or on YouTube at a Twin Twin Life Zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I promise all those will be unified, like one title, one day, <laughs> but not today. <laughs> so remember all of those. And again, thank you so much, Dom. We love you. You're always welcome here. Sweet. And next time we'll talk about DMT. Next don't time we'll talk about yeah, DMT. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your work. Hopefully you enjoyed these three episodes or however long we <laughs> broke this up into. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I just want us to have a regular. I want to have a regular outro once. Just. Love you guys.